Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nowak again. I thought I would do a short video and I entitled it, You Are Entitled to Your Own Opinions, But You Are Not to Your Own Facts. People make a lot of comments on the comments section and believe it or not, I look at all the comments. And one thing I don't really want is comments being made that are non-truth comments or people are making a comment that they really don't know what they're talking about. One person, I'm not going to say who they were, but they started giving out facts and figures of 85% of the hobbyists out there. Well, first of all, how do you know it's 85% of the hobbyists out there? Where are you getting your facts in? And their facts that they were giving in one of the comments was completely wrong. Not that it was bad, it, it was just wrong. And therefore, I pulled it off the comments because I do not want people making a comment on my channel that is going to be misleading or misconstrued by beginner hobbyists when they may re read something like that. And they may take it as truth and that is what it is supposed to be. I have people constantly telling me that they're going on forums and stuff they're trying to get advice and they're getting advice from all kinds of people and it's not the right advice because a lot of people just make up stuff or they think this is what it is on my channel this is an educational channel okay i'm not like the other channels out there that put out a video and they're really not doing it too much for education as they're doing it for profit. There's got to be some monetary value involved in the channel. That's why so many of these channels are owned by uh, people who have businesses. I do, not, I do a consulting business for lakes, ponds, and stuff like that. How to keep them clean and how I do that. But my knowledge that I give you is the knowledge that's written in books and textbooks, what is being taught in universities. It is not something that's just being made up. When I do a review like I did the radon, for example, uh, I gave you a review of the radon. Somebody made a comment that, uh, well, the fifth generation radon now connects up to the internet and I said well why did it take five generations to get this thing up to speed that means it's been out for quite some time and the technology that the light uses where they have these uh, glass spheres underneath each LED that's nothing new look at this picture of this old flashlight from the 1950s it uses a sphere on the front lens. There's nothing new about that technology. Yet, when Radon did it to make the light spread out further, everybody made a big deal out of this extremely old technology that they've been using on flashlights for a long, long time. This is nothing new. Any engineer knows this. Some of these companies hold back on improving things or making things right in the first place because they want you, the hobbies, to keep buying the newest and greatest light. This is the same stuff they pull with uh, stereo equipment, I think I mentioned in my last video. Anyway, this individual gave out information. I pulled their comment because it is incorrect information. This is a learning channel. It is not a channel where I'm just trying to do something to make money on the side or I'm doing it to misconstrue what I'm saying to people uh, because it's just something I think is right. It's either something that has been proven out in a lab, it's been proven out in textbooks, it's been done by professionals beyond that of the hobbyists. It's not something that's anecdotal that really doesn't have enough people to back it up. 
because there are millions and millions of hobbyists that participate in this aquarium hobby of ours. And a lot of information is good that's given out, and some can be misconstrued by beginners as being factual and truth. And it is not. And I don't want something like that to be written down so somebody reads it and thinks what this person is saying is factual. Now, if they want to go on a forum and say what they said, that's fine. But if you're going to say something in the comments, and I read it and I see it does not hold facts of what we know scientifically, I'm going to pull it because I do not want new hobbyists getting the mindset that what is being said is the truth and thinking that what they are saying, this individual, is correct. Now, I'm going to read... You write out, and I'm going to quote, this is quoted, for this individual that, that wrote this, and they know who they are. I'm going to quote you right out of a textbook, okay? So, this is something that's written right out of a textbook about cryptocorine, all right? And it's basically going to say the same thing I've been saying on my videos. So, no matter what anyone tells you about cryptocorine, this is what the textbooks, this is what is known about this plant. Quote, in the aquarium, cryptocorines are confronted with large supplies of nitrate, which they do not recognize. Since they cannot differentiate in their intake of nutrients, the nitrate is taken in by the plant in large amounts, but is then stored in the tissues as useless. Overfertilization with nitrate, for example, is considered to be one of the major causes of cryptocorine rot. For these plants, the smallest chemical or physical change in their environment can cause catastrophic effects. Such effects can be caused by sudden changes in light or by chemical additives. However, irregularity provided fertilizers. Sudden changes in CO2 supply uncontrolled iron fertilization and water changes occurring at too great of intervals can also cause these dismal results. The measures described will lead to the breakdown and reconstruction of the nitrate stored in the plants during the plant's metabolic processes. These and similar treatments result in the occurrence of toxic intermediated compounds of nitrogen which attack single leaves as well as entire plants and consequently cause typical cryptocorine rot, end quote. If you wish to debate this, then I suggest you rewrite the textbooks and tell everybody that through your studies and your findings, you found what I have just quoted you is 100% wrong. Cryptocorine is a beginner plant, or they classify it as a beginner plant, only because of the fact it could be grown in low light. And if you don't use CO2, it will grow very slowly. If, and this is a word of caution, and I probably should have told you this in my earlier videos, if you set up an aquarium, like I am showing you, and you use a slow-moving plenum, and you have cryptocorine, and you turn around, and you add fertilizer, like I showed you in my last video, every day, like I showed you, whether you squirt it in, or whether you, you go through uh, a five-gallon tub or aquarium, or you have a dosing system of some sort, you will find out by using what I am telling you here, your cryptocorine is going to grow profusely. Cryptocorine will turn into a weed plant. Now, most of you have not recognized this. Maybe some of you have. Some of the more professionals out there will say, you know, yeah, I've noticed it. Already in my tank on the 
left side of the tank, I already have three new cryptocorns growing from runners. Within time, that left side is going to get more and more filled with cryptocorn. It literally becomes a weed. It grows very large, larger than most aquariums can even handle. And as you see through the video that it's already sent out three runners. And these runners are so quick, you'll notice a new plant on the left side there. Within a day, one will pop up out of the substrate. When you use a system like this, the nutrients, once that cryptocorin has developed its vascular system, its root system, you are going to have an explosion of this particular plant. And it will get huge and it will keep sending plants out all over your aquarium. Most of these plants in a year from now, year and a half from now, this, my, my aquariums look like what I call a jungle aquarium because the plants just accelerate so much that they just fill in the aquarium to the point where it looks like a jungle. If you're the individual hobbyist who doesn't want to put the work in, constantly trimming, constantly replanting stuff, which I am not, if you do what I'm telling you, your tank will turn into a jungle because most of these plants are huge, huge plants when they grow to their full size. Like I told you in pr previous videos, I had Amazon swords that grow over two feet tall, three to four inches in diameter leaves. They're huge plants, okay? If you follow my instructions, your tank will definitely just overcrowd itself because these plants get huge, they get big, and they keep multiplying, and they keep spreading. And this is the reason why they keep filling in. Cryptocorin is one of those plants that will keep spreading and keep spreading and keep spreading throughout your aquarium, and they do get big. They get huge. They just don't stay in one spot. They will start sending runners all over your substrate because if you're using a slow-moving printer, that nutrients will constantly be coming into their vascular system, their root system, and they are going to keep multiplying, not knowing any better. So if you have a cryptocorin and that particular plant is growing, it looks nice, you've had it, let's say, over a year, it's got real nice, and this aquarium, it's going to be, you're going to have more than one plant. You're going to have lots of plants growing. They're going to get huge. And believe me, when I say huge, I mean the the whole root system is going to be spread out all over the substrate of just one plant. I have two of them on either side. Now, I knew what I was doing when I started this, but you have to understand a lot of these plants, once they establish their root system, they're going to take off. As the old saying goes, they're going to take off like a bat out of hell. They will. And they're not going to stop. So in one way you could say, yeah, this is a beginner plant. But in another way, you also have to say this is a very advanced plant for very large aquariums because they will just keep multiple. Even in my 20 gallon tank, that one cryptocorin, even though I pulled it out as much as the root system as I can, some of it stayed in the aquarium. It already has runners throughout the 20 gallon aquarium. It's already reestablished. And if I was had the light system back on there, the fluval light with the CO2, that plant would just keep growing and growing and taking over the whole aquarium. If you're not getting these results, then your plant's not growing at 100% of its capacity. Okay, you should be getting the same exact results. So, the worst part about this plant is, as I have explained, high nitrates is one thing the plant does not care for in your aquarium water column. You have to keep your nitrates as low as possible because these plants take in that nitrate, they don't use it. But if anything goes wrong, 
as I have just read to you, anything goes wrong and that plant can start rotting, the leaves can start rotting, and you won't know what you did wrong. Okay, you give them the right environment, they are beautiful plants, huge plants. They're huge. Believe me, uh, it's not unusual to have a plant that could be uh, a foot in diameter sending out runners all over your aquarium. So if you don't want that, and if you're using my system, if you don't want plants to grow quite that good and turn into a jungle aquarium, then don't use my system. And I'm, I'm being honest with you, don't use it. Because that's exactly what you're going to wind up with. You're going to wind up that the plants are going to outgrow your aquarium. Because these plants, the size you're looking at them and the size you buy them at, they're quite small compared to their, if you want to call it their adult size. And using a system like mine is going to bring them into that adult size. And a lot of these plants that we use do not fit in our small aquariums. They're great for big, huge aquariums because if they're growing correctly, one plant can turn into 20 or 30 plants for you. But this is what happens in the wild. This is exactly what happens with natural systems. You are now mimicking a natural system. So you have to remember that because you are mimicking a natural system as close as we could get it, the plants are going to be tricked into thinking they are in a natural system and start growing accordingly. Even though I have commented that you don't have to bring your CO2 up to full blast of 30 parts per million, you can have it less. Because I don't want the plants to grow super, super fast because it just fills your aquarium up too fast. And I've done this and I proved it. In fact, it gets to the point where the plants grow so big and so fast and so luxurious that the it's almost like the fish can't even swim in the aquarium anymore. So I probably should have told you this in the beginning. When you start using a slow-moving plenum and an anoxic filter, like I have explained, you are going to have an explosion of plants, and you're going to start noticing your plants are going to start sending out runners. They're going to start making very big vascular systems because they're able to, because they're getting what they're supposed to be getting, the right amount of oxygen, the right amount of nutrients on a constant basis. And believe me, you give a plant the right amount of oxygen, the right amount of nutrients on a daily basis, they're going to explode on you. And then you're going to get maybe even aggravated that your plants are now bigger than what they should be. Trust me on this. I've seen people with ponds. The books have said a particular plant gets about three feet tall. They planted it up with a BCB basket in their pond. The plant now is eight foot tall. I have pictures of it in my book. The plant, instead of being three foot tall, is eight foot tall. Are the, are the plants that normally wouldn't become invasive in a person's pond became invasive? Okay. Trust me, when you give a plant what it needs, it is going to explode on you. It is just going to be a lot bigger than what you think it should be. And it will turn your tank into a jungle. Now, I do not mind that. That's just me. I'm not an individual who who is real anal and I need to have each plant in its own little spot because I want it to look like a, a, a Dutch aquarium or in a mono aquarium where everything's all just absolutely perfect. And I'm not the kind of person, I admit it, I, I don't trim things like I should trim them. Uh, I just not that way. I let nature take its course. And to me, that's part of the fun of the hobby. But I understand that some people don't like that. And I would recommend that 
if you are one of those people who don't like that, this probably isn't a system for you because your plants are going to overgrow your aquarium eventually and you're going to have to now start thinking what am I going to do with these plants that I did not want to be sending runners all over my aquarium. Uh, I had that trouble with the uh, Monte Carlo. The thing just started growing all over the place and I did a video on it and then all the Monte Carlo did was start trapping all kinds of detritus and, st and dirt and everything else and uh, that video is very controversial that uh, people are constantly making comments about it. Oh, I should have done this. I, and I've gotten some great comments like, oh, you could have used a vacuum for it or whatever. But I'm not the only video about that where people have pulled up their Monte Carlo and had it just fill their whole aquarium with garbage. Okay, because it just traps it in there. Um, but it grew a little faster than what I wanted to. And I know some hobbyists out there wish theirs would grow like that. But that was just with homemade lighting and doing the same thing that once again had a plenum that particular tank that i show with the monte carlo had a plenum and therefore nutrients were getting underneath the monte carlo feeding it and it kept growing and sending out runners all over the place if you do things right i've had this happen to me before where i've had uh, uh Java fern had it for 15, 20 years. It just covered everything in the aquarium. It just grew to the point where everything became covered. So I just wanted to make sure I made it clear about the cryptochorine of some of the problems that uh, can occur if you use this plant. To me, it's a beginner plant if you're not using CL2 or something like that. It's a great beginner plant. But if you're using a more advanced aquarium and you're using a slow-moving plenum or something, this plant can really get out of hand and start taking over your aquarium. So that's a little word of caution. But anyway, basically this video was about if you're going to make a comment, if it doesn't hold facts, I'm going to pull your comment. Okay, I, this is an educational channel. It's to educate individuals with the correct facts. I don't want people giving me their opinion. And then I don't need your facts. If you want to give me your opinion, give me the facts. Not just what you think. Because this channel is about educating people with facts. Not of what people think should be or would be or can be i do not want that information to get out because personally there's too much of that information out there okay there's just too much out there and it's too confusing for the new hobbyists and they have just too many problems then and then they get disenchanted over the whole hobby and get out of the hobby and that's not the point the point is to have them really enjoy the hobby and stick with the hobby for as long as I have stuck with it and enjoy every minute of it. So thank you for watching. Until next time. Uh